Hi dear students, welcome to one more session of immunology and today we are going to talk about the antibodies. As we all know, antibodies are certain proteinaceous molecules which have been produced by the B lymphocytes within our body in response to the antigen which happens to enter our body. And these antibodies primarily are being found within the serum of a body as well as in some tissues as well as in certain fluids also. But let me just explain to you what is uh, what is the serum and what is a plasma. The fluid portion of the blood is mainly considered to be as the plasma. And in addition to the fluid portion of the blood, we know that the blood also contains cellular fractions such as RBC, WBC as well as the platelets. And uh, also various soluble small particles as well as macromolecules of the blood including the fibrin as well as other proteins which are being found within the formation of clots are also being found within the plasma. So if the blood or the plasma is allowed to flow, what happens? Various proteins get interacted to with each other uh, such as the fibrin and the, uh, is converted into fibrinogen and RBCs also get clumped and as a result a clot is being formed and uh, ex excluding the clot formed the blood will also contain a fluid part which has been released after the blood clotting that is referred to as a serum and uh, it is known that it is within this serum that the antibodies is being formed now if you go to try to explore this this is the whole blood and when you uh, allow it to sediment, you can see that the RBC, WBC and platelets get settled like this. And the fluid portion which remains on top is referred to as a plasma. And if the blood gets clotted, the RBC as well as the platelets will get clotted and you form a clot over at the bottom. And a fluid portion is being found on top that is referred to as the serum. And it is within this serum is the antibodies. Now. What is the antibodies? Antibody is also known as immunoglobulin and it is a glycoprotein. It is represented by IgE, sorry, Ig or AB for our convenience. And uh, they are usually serum active proteins which have been found against the antigen and which is capable of reacting with the antigen. They are mainly been found in the serum, body fluids and in the tissues. And uh, to note that, these immunoglobulins are being produced only by the vertebrates only in response to the antigens. And the cells which mainly produce these immunoglobulins are the B lymphocytes, especially the plasma cells when they get activated by, the, by a particular antigen. Uh, the discovery of uh, the antibodies uh, and what is the type of their nature was being discovered by Tizelius and Carbett in 1939. What they did was they immunized some rabbits with a, a protein called ovalbumin. Albumin is an egg white. Okay. And uh, they took the, what do you say? They took the serum of the rabbits and they ca ca carried out a electrophoresis. And they found that it mainly, the serum contained uh, four different fractions of globulins like uh, one was albumin which they had inoculated then there was alpha globulin beta globulin and gamma globulin later on what they did they took another liquid of the serum and interacted it with albumin to see whether which fract and um, of course that time what would happen the proteins in the serum would interact with albumin and after interaction, they were again electrophorist and they saw that there was a decline in the gamma fraction of the of the proteins on electrophoresis. Okay, so they concluded that immunoglobulins are being found to be in as gamma globulins. You just uh, have to know what is the nature of the immunoglobulin. Now, let's move on. But the structure of the uh, immunoglobulins were dis was elucidated in 1962 by Rodney Potter and the structure is being found of antibodies they are being considered to be Y or T shape and you can see that they mainly consist of uh, four chains 
two heavy chains and two light chains and each light chain uh, polypeptide has consists of about 220 amino acids and a mass of approximately 25000 dalton is the one of a light chain and the heavy chain will contain around uh, 440 amino acids and it could be of it could have a mass of about 50000 to 70000 daltons now just have a look on that the no this is a two chains would be there now this is a light chain and this is a heavy chain so if you go to take the ant uh, immunoglobulin the immunoglobulin will consist of four chains this is the first chain second chain third chain and the fourth chain so four chains are there which are uh, made up of various amino acids and uh, the heavy chains as well as the light chains are being linked together so if you go to consider the light chains the light chains itself can be or of two types kappa and lambda based upon the structure and the amino acid sequences and uh, regardless of the immunoglobulin class each antibody molecule produced by a sole b cell will either contain kappa or lambda light chains but never the both so if you go to consider a type of b lymphocyte that b cell will produce only antibodies producing either kappa or lambda like chain but never the both that you have to understand and the heavy chains could be of different types it could be of uh, micro delta gamma epsilon and alpha and it is based upon this uh, type of the heavy chain that different types of immunoglobulins are being formed do remember that antibodies uh, against a particular antigen itself uh, what happens different class of antibodies can be formed they are igg iga igm igd and ige okay and all these these different antibodies which have been produced against a single antigen they mainly differ in their heavy chains i i guess you can look into this if this this is a heavy chain when this heavy chain gets changed that will result into the different form different classes of the antibodies now they are mainly now if you take a particular b lymphocyte uh, the order of the antibodies against a particular antigen is m d g a okay just uh, look here m d g e a the first if i if one particular covid 19 antigen is covid 19 virus is coming and you are trying to produce antibodies against it and you have a b lymphocyte that b lymphocyte will first produce a igm type of antibody then it will form a igd type of antibody okay then igg then iga and iga so mdg that is the order in which the type of antibodies which are being formed and they mainly differ in the heavy chains of their of these antibodies now what are these uh, why uh, what are the characteristics of these antibodies uh, let's talk about igm first igm is a pentamer molecule that is it is a first antibody which has been formed uh, when a antigen comes and it is uh, it increases transiently so the recent infection is been denoted by the presence of igm here five antibody molecules are being linked together to form a pentamer molecule and after igm igd is been formed now this is also been formed is not a pentamer it is a monomer but the exact function of that is not known after d then igg type of immunoglobulin is been produced by the same type of b lymphocyte and they are the ones which carry out the functions of opsonization and neutralization and uh, they also can be classified into different classes igg1 igg2 3 as well as igg4 and uh, after g you can have ige type of antibodies are being formed by the same b lymphocytes and they are the ones which are being involved in the allergenic function and iga is called the secretory antibody they can they are expressed in the mucosal tissues and they can occur 
as uh, dimers after the secretion. So if you go to consider your uh, human body, different types of antibodies are being formed in different say. Now the secretions, the secretions mainly contain the IgA type of antibodies and uh, when you have allergenic responses, it is the IgE type of antibody which is being formed. So different antibodies have different functions or different roles and the type or the location with, in which they are being formed also being varied. Now, regardless of the type, you can see that all the antibodies do have certain constant regions as well as certain variable regions. That is, if you go to consider the heavy chain and the light chain, you can see this light blue portion. This light blue portion of the heavy chain and the light chain do contain more or less constant uh, type of amino acids and hence they are called the constant regions. The other one portions, they are referred to as a variable region. That is, the amino acids in this this is a heavy chain. This portion and the amino acids in the uh, end of the light chain is also being found to be variable. That is called the what? Variable region. So, these amino, it is this region in fact which will change with different antigens. Now, if you go to consider an Anti antibody interacting with an antigen, it is the variable region which will interact with the antigen. And so, uh, the changes in this variable region will enable the antibody to bind with different antigens. So, what is a constant uh, region? As I told you, the amino acid sequence that do not vary significantly between the antibodies of the same class, uh, that regions are referred to as the constant regions. And when the constant regions have been present in the light chain, they are called the CL regions. And when the re uh, constant regions have been present in the heavy chain, it is called the CH region. And we also do have a variable region called the VL and the VH for each antibody. And uh, it is the variable region of the antibody that forms the antigen binding sites of the antibodies. Now again, if you go to digest an antibody using different protein, uh, proteins like the pepsin and pepain, you get different fragments. On pepsin digestion, you get a one fragment called the FC fragment or the fragment crystallizable and the second one is called the FAB2 fragments. That is two FAB fragments together bound. And if you go to take the immunoglobulin and bind it with another enzyme called the pepin, you get FC fragment and the FAB2 fragment split into two. Now, this portion is a crystallizable portion and this mainly constitutes the what? The portion which interacts with the, the antigen. So, that's about the four chains. The stock of the Y is called the fragment crystallizable on digestion. And they can mainly bind to the host cell by interacting with a cell surface F0 receptors. And the top of the Y consists of two antigen binding fragments that bind with the compatible epitopes. You know what is an epitope? The part of the what? The part of the antibody which interacts with the antigen is referred to as the no, the part of the uh, antigen. Oh yeah. The part of the antigen with which the antibody interact is called the uh, epitope. I told you uh, in the classes we had told on the surface of the antigen only small at small regions the antibodies will go and bind. That is referred to as the epitope. So it is the FAB portion which will interact with the epitope of, of the particular antigen. So, the FC fragments are mainly consist of only two constant regions, whereas the FAB fragments have both the constant as well as the variable regions. And both the heavy and the light chain consist of several homologous units of about 100 to 110 amino acids. And within each unit, called the domain, uh, you can see that there are disulfide bonds which are being formed, which form a loop of approximately 60 amino acids. And there would be also interchain disulfide bonds also. If you have not noticed it, you can see here. In each heavy chain and a light chain, there are intra-chain disulfide bonds. So you can see there are loop-like structures and intra-chain disulfide bonds are there. This is a light chain here. 
and look in the heavy chain also you have intra chain disulfide bonds and at the same time inter chain disulfide bonds is also been formed that is the heavy chain and the heavy chain is also being linked together by a disulfide bond and this region uh, where the neck of this antibody is referred to as the hinge region that is this portion that is the neck of the y is referred to as the hinge region so uh, in an antibody you have four chains the heavy chain and the light chain and uh, the heavy chain as well as the light chain does have a constant region and a variable region and uh, you can divide it as a fc fragment as well as a fab fragment on digestion with the uh, enzymes and both intra chain and inter chain disulfide bonds are being found within the antibodies and you can see that when an anti antigen comes into your body, the first class of antibodies which has been formed is the Ig, IgM. After that, it will get converted into different classes of antibodies like D, G, E and A. And the different classes of these antibodies are mainly being produced from the same uh, mature B cell. But uh, what happens? The different classes are being formed by changing the heavy chains of the these antibodies and these are mainly being carried out uh, by a process called the immunoglobulin class switching and uh, what happens is uh, here various genes which have been involved in the H, G, H chain formation like uh, they are undergoing some recombination and that is the one which is responsible for the different types of uh, immunoglobulins which are being formed during the uh, different stages of the infection. So with this, we come to an end about uh, a basic outline about the structure and types of uh, immunoglobulins. Thank you.